Well, hello everyone and welcome to this webinar brought to you by fxstreet.com entitled Short-Term Support and Resistance Trading with uh, Naked Charts. Uh, this webinar, uh, my name again is uh, James Chen. I am uh, the Chief Technical Strategist at FX Solutions. Now on this webinar, I'm going to be talking about um, trading on charts without indicators. And a lot of you may already trade that way, uh, I'm not sure, but uh, what you're going to see, I'm going to show you, uh, first I'm going to go through a bunch of uh, material based upon uh, naked uh, chart trading, but then I'm going to uh, show you some live charts that I have um, and show you that. Uh, I, you know, before I start, I'd like to say, first of all, you know, anyone who trades just based upon support and resistance will see that, uh, and a lot of you have already traded for a long time, will see that um, support and resistance are not really precise but uh, you work with what you could uh, work with. And uh, with that, let's get started. Now, before we get started, I'd like to quickly uh, just give you a brief introduction to myself, as always, uh, in case you're not familiar with me. And then we'll go from there on to uh, the main part of the pre presentation. OK, with that, uh, briefly about me, uh, I've traded actively as a private trader since the inception of Retail Forex. Uh, I use primarily technical analysis, and uh, this is one of my main strategies that I'm going to be talking about today. It's purely technical. I do take into consideration uh, fundamentals as well, um, but primarily uh, I like to uh, stay away from uh, large, uh, you know, those uh, market moving news announcements and keep with the technicals. Now, I've worked for two major forex brokers. Currently, I'm the chief technical strategist uh, at FX Solutions, and I've been, an, uh, been at FX Solutions for around three years. Uh, I'm a registered uh, commodity trading advisor. I have uh, traded funds in the past, uh, but now uh, pretty much uh, working for FX Solutions, uh, I'm concentrated on uh, the technical analysis and the education uh, aspect of it. Now, I'm also a chartered market technician, which is, uh, if you're not familiar with that, it's uh, pretty much uh, the designation for technical analysts. Uh, I've authored numerous articles in Forbes.com, Futures Magazine, Technical Analysis of Stocks and Commodities Magazine, SFO Magazine, etc. Uh, you will see a, a new article that's coming out in the next issue of SFO Magazine uh, regarding multiple time frame trading. So you can take a look at that. Uh, I've also been quoted uh, on a regular basis by Reuters News, Dow Jones, Associated Press, and the International Herald Tribune. And for those of you uh, who are not familiar with me, I do publish a daily analysis, uh, which includes the chart of the day, which is uh, every day I put up a different analysis on a different currency pair, um, technical analysis on our website, fxsolutions.com, as well as uh, on my blog at fxpath.fxstreet.com, uh, and on a bunch of other uh, websites as well. Now. Um, I do have uh, intraday Forex updates at on Twitter. If you're uh, not yet familiar with Twitter, you could go there and take a look, twitter.com slash jameschenfx, and I do put out uh, intraday updates, and uh, you could go ahead and follow that uh, as well. Now, uh, what Maud was talking about before I started here, uh, I will be a speaker at uh, FX Street's International Traders Conference uh, 2009. This is going to be uh, in October in Barcelona, and I hope to see all of you there. Uh, now, uh, you know, I'm going to be showing you live charts uh, today on, uh, you know, rather short-term charts, uh, the 30-minute chart, but uh, I realized while preparing my charts that it's, it's tough to be doing this uh, on a, such a short, you know, time frame. We're, we're doing a 45-minute a webinar here. It's tough to show you all, everything I want to show you uh, on the short-term charts. Now, at the International Traders Conference in Barcelona, uh, if any of you are able to attend, I will be doing uh, live trading sessions, and we're going to have a, a long time to do that. So I'll show you exactly, you know, it'll be a lot easier to show you exactly uh, how I approach the markets, and uh, you could take a look at that. So hopefully I see everyone there, and we've got a lot of great speakers there. Uh, again, I, um, for those of you who are not aware, I did just release a book a couple months ago. It's called Essentials of Foreign Exchange Trading by John Wiley and Sons. Uh, it's available now uh, at Amazon.com and in bookstores, so you could pick that up. It has a bunch of strategies in it, as well as uh, information on, uh, you know, basic information on the uh, market mechanics, as well as uh, fundamental analysis, technical analysis, etc. So it's a pretty complete book, and it gives you lots of strategies as well. Now, currently, I am working on uh, an upcoming book entitled uh, Essentials of Technical Analysis for Financial Markets and that's due at the end of 2009, and that's going to be more of a broad-based look at 
technical analysis as, of, as it applies not only to the Forex market, but to uh, equities, futures, uh, et cetera. So uh, that, could, uh, you know, that could be a very good um, you know, book for you to, uh, to really learn about technical analysis if you're not already uh, very familiar with it. Okay, so uh, Boyke, the, the difference between the two books is uh, essentially the first book is uh, concentrated uh, almost exclusively on the foreign exchange market, whereas the next book will be uh, very, very heavily into technical analysis. And it's going to go in-depth in technical analysis um, that can be applied to all financial markets, uh, not only Forex, but uh, I will bring it, uh, all the charts I'm going to be using are going to be Forex charts, uh, but at the same time they can be, um, uh, they can be uh, extended over to all of your other financial markets as well. Okay, so that's basically um, about me. Now let's get on to the main presentation. Now, many of you may have heard uh, naked support and resistance tra uh, trading uh, or naked uh, trading on naked charts. It's a funny name. Now, if you take a look at my charts, which I'm going to show you in a few minutes, uh, you'll see it doesn't really look naked because it's all drawn up. There are all kinds of things all over it. But the one thing that it, uh, you know, that it doesn't have and that, uh, you know, I don't like to use, uh, overuse, are, uh, you know, lots of different types of indicators. Of course, you know, I do use indicators. I do use uh, moving averages. I do use Bollinger Bands uh, as well as a confirmation um, oscillator on the bottom um, most of the time. But for, primarily, if, you ever, if you've ever taken a look at my analysis, it's basically, uh, I don't even talk about, uh, you know, uh, overbought, oversold uh, on the oscillators or the moving averages, et cetera. Uh, I'm primarily talking about support and resistance. Um, now, support and resistance can occur in many different uh, types, uh, you know, many different ways, which I'll show you in a minute. So, you know, basically trading naked means trading without indicators. Uh, that's that's uh, my understanding of it. That's how I trade. Uh, but your charts will still have many drawn lines on it, many circles, lines, uh, you know, whether it be horizontal lines or, uh, or uh, trend lines, et cetera, or Fibonacci retracements um, or pivot points, et cetera. They're all forms of support and resistance, whether it be static support and resistance or dynamic uh, support and resistance. Static support and resistance being... Uh, support and resistance that uh, doesn't change the, the price level and dynamic being like a trend line where the price level changes. So for example, you have an uptrend, you have uptrend support, you have downtrend, uh, you have a downtrend, uh, downtrend resistance, okay, which I'll go through uh, briefly in a second. Now this method uh, of trading is the primary style uh, of trading used by many technical traders, uh, including me. And again, if you've seen my, any of my analysis, uh, you'll see that uh, I do use daily charts. Now, I'm going to be talking about shorter-term trading, uh, this time on, on 30-minute charts here on the, in this webinar. But uh, for the most part, uh, I do my chart of the day analysis on daily charts. The only reason I do that is that, uh, you know, when you work with uh, shorter-term charts uh, doing analysis, and, and by the time you post all your analysis, uh, you know, everything pretty much uh, can change. So that's why I use longer-term charts, uh, the daily charts, and I like to trade off daily charts as well. Uh, but I'm going to be showing you my approach to shorter-term trading on um, on support, you know, naked support and resistance charts. So uh, again, that is the primary style used by many many technical traders, including myself. Now, um, you know, if you've ever heard of anyone uh, talk about trading off of pure price action, this is it. It's trading off of support and resistance. Now, uh, most indicators and oscillators lag price. Now, I'm not, uh, I'm not really uh, denigrating uh, indicators or oscillators because I do use them on many occasions. But uh, the simple fact of the matter is that most of them uh, lag price and uh, support and resistance uh, trading does not. So, uh, you know, I like to use uh, some indicators and oscillators as, uh, as confirmation tools, but mostly uh, what I'm going to show you today is the way I trade. Now, uh, price levels are the most important element of technical analysis. Recent support and resistance is strongest. Uh, you have, uh, I'm going to show you uh, where you go to the, uh, the longer term charts, and you're going to be plotting your support and resistance on those. But uh, when you go down to uh, drill down to the shorter term, you're going to see that the recent uh, support and resistance is the strongest and is the most valid um, for your short term trading. 
So uh, support and resistance can be static. Uh, as I just mentioned, uh, for example, horizontal levels were price term previously, uh, Fibonacci levels and pivot points, and there are other ways that people also, uh, uh, you know, uh, create or put on support and resistance um, static levels on their charts. Now, support and resistance can also be dynamic, as I mentioned. Uh, for example, diagonal trend lines and chart patterns. Chart patterns being like those, uh, the flags and the pennants and the triangles, et cetera. Those are dynamic support and resistance. And I use all of those. Now, uh, you look for uh, confluence. Uh, confluence m simply means a coming together or uh, several different support and resistance factors um, supporting each other, if you will. You know, uh, you know uh, if you talk about uh, if you talk about different drawn lines and different mathematically derived lines, what I mean by mathematically derived are the Fibonacci's, the pivot points, etc. Uh, so if you talk about all of those coming together, uh, those are those are uh, you know th playing that kind of confluence is the strongest type of uh, technical analysis uh, that you could um, you know arguably practice, which is you know, everything coming together at a support level, everything coming together at a resistance level. One of my favorite ways to play this is that uh, you're looking at a trend line and you're looking at a prior support resistance level where prices turned in the past. That's a confluence of different uh, factors all uh, contributing to that support and resistance level. Okay, so uh, that's what I mean by confluence. And uh, along with that, along with the drawn lines, along with the mathematically derived lines, like the Fibonacci's, et cetera, you've got the chart patterns as well, and you have uh, candle shapes. And what I mean by candle shapes are, um, you know, for example, uh, a hammer at the low and a shooting star at the high, or a bullish engulfing pattern uh, at a low. You know, all these are reversal patterns that, uh, you know, that can confirm uh, a confluence of different support and resistance. So uh, I use all of those in my trading, and that, that all coming together uh, still constitutes what I call, quote unquote, a naked chart. Now, uh, I play, wh what, uh, you know, what I usually do is I play bounces or breaks with confirmation. So whenever you have a confluence of different um, support and resistance uh, coming together, uh, you're going to either look for a bounce or a break. I mean, that's, it's as simple as that, and you may, uh, you may criticize that, uh, that thinking, but that's basically what it is. You're looking for uh, price to either respect support and resistance, a confluence of su support and resistance, or you're looking for price to violate a confluence of support and resistance. And the theory is that, you know, usually it should respect it. But um, if there's a violation, as in a breakout or a breakdown, then uh, you're going to have uh, increased momentum afterwards, after the breakout, because of the fact that it's hard uh, it's difficult to break through that support or resistance level. Um, you know, if it actually does succeed in breaking through, the theory is that uh, there will be momentum afterwards in the direction of the break. Now, of course, as you all know, this doesn't always happen, and that's why you have to have strong, um, strong risk, uh, risk and money management. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a second as well. But uh, that is the theory of it. Now, the general concept I work on uh, in all of my trading, uh, whether it be long-term trading, short-term trading, etc. Um, and you'll see that uh, my charts are uh, very minimalist in that, uh, again, I don't use a lot of indicators and oscillators, but um, the general concepts I work on, uh, I am in very big into patterns, John, um, and I'll show you that in a second as well. So uh, general concept of, what, uh, of how I trade is confluence. I'm looking for a coming together of different, uh, you know, different lines, different support and resistance factors. I like to trend follow. I like to follow a trend whenever there is a trend. Um, I like to play breakouts. Uh, breakouts, uh, you know, like I just mentioned, a violation of support and resistance. The theory is that it's going to keep going in the momentum. Uh, the momentum will keep going in the direction of the break. Uh, now, if you could put all this together, uh, breakouts in the direction of the trend and a confluence of support and resistance, that's, uh, you know, even better. And then number four, uh, number four is the volatility expansion. Now, when I talk about volatility expansion, uh, I just did a, a webinar that's recorded. It's on uh, FX Street. If you take a look at that, um, basically, uh, you know what I'm talking about is uh, uh, an expansion out of uh, low volatility, which is uh, like a you know like a chart pattern, 
like a, a flag or a, a pennant or a triangle, those are all, uh, you know, decreasing or decreased volatility. A breakout of those uh, are good opportunities, uh, whether you're playing on, you know, long-term charts or short-term charts. So all of these general concepts that I put together, um, you know, if, if I could find all of those in one trade, that's a high probability trade right there. Okay, if you think about it, uh, those are the four factors that, that create, for me, a high probability entry at least. Okay, a confluence of support and resistance, I'm following the trend, I'm playing a breakout, and it's a volatility, it's a volatility expansion as well. So, those four things. And if any of you, uh, you know, I know I write a lot on my, uh, on my uh, uh, slides here. If any of you want my slides, um, I'm, I'd be more than happy to send them to you. Uh, you could email me. I'll give you my email address at the end. Okay, so that's uh, briefly about uh, uh, naked uh, chart trading on, you know, support and resistance in the Forex market. Now, the tools that I use, and I'm going to, uh, a lot of you may have seen this already. Um, I'm going to show you, uh, you know, some of uh, the tools that I use for uh, for trading uh, this the, for this type of trading, and uh, I'm going to show you on my on my real charts in a second. But I'll, I'll just go over these real quick. Now the tools I use are horizontal support and resistance lines, denoting where previous turns occurred. And I you know I can't stress this uh, enough. This this is very very important. This is uh, you know the basis of uh, what a lot of people do uh, is looking for where there must have been a, a reason for price turning. Uh, at a certain support or resistance level in the past, and uh, those are often, you know, those support or resistance levels are often hit uh, multiple times, and when that occurs, the more times it's hit and the more recent these hits have, have occurred or these turns have occurred, uh, then the more valid those uh, sub horizontal support and resistance lines are. Uh, that's probably the basis, um, you know, it's really the heart of technical analysis. Now, uh, beyond that, We've got trend lines. Trend lines are simply dynamic support and resistance uh, in the form of, uh, as I mentioned before, an uptrend is, uh, you know, how I look at an uptrend is, uh, you know, uh, an ideal uptrend is higher, uh, higher highs and higher lows. But uh, at the same time, when you're drawing trend lines, uh, you know, uh, you could draw connecting the, uh, the higher lows, okay? So that's called uptrend support. And an ideal trend line would be, uh, would be a trend channel, a parallel trend channel, which is both higher lows and higher highs. Okay, but uh, trend lines um, trend lines are very good at, at denoting dynamic uh, support and resistance. By the same token, a downtrend, uh, you know, uh, an ideal downtrend is lower lows and uh, and lower highs. But uh, when you're drawing a trend line, uh, as you'll see in a second, it's um, you know uh, downtrend resistance, which is uh, lower highs. You're connecting lower highs. Okay, so those are my main two uh, two main uh, tools for uh, this type of trading. Now I use uh, also Fibonacci retracements and pivot points. I can't really show you how I use the pivot points right now because um, you know because of the limitations of uh, of the charting program I'm using right now. But uh, in terms of Fibonacci retracements, I'll show you a bunch of uh, different uh, places where Fibonacci combines with horizontal support and resistance and possibly a trend line as well to create a confluence of support and resistance. And those, again, are very high probability places to get into trades. Uh, chart patterns. And uh, can everyone hear me? I think uh, Pittville said no sound there, but hopefully everyone can still hear me. Okay, great. Okay, so um, chart patterns uh, are simply, and uh, you know, one of you just said before, uh, regarding uh, that I am a pattern trader. Yes, I am, uh, I'm, uh, because what, what are patterns but simply dynamic support and resistance? They're not much different from trend lines. They're just shorter trend lines uh, denoting uh, dynamic support and resistance, and you're looking for a breakout okay, of these chart patterns, whether they be a flag, a pennant, uh, or, you know, or what have you, uh, you know, a triangle or a rectangle. Um, I primarily look for continuation patterns. The only reason I do that is because I do like to uh, follow the trend. So when you when you see a uh, what's called a what's called a volatility contraction uh, in the in the form of a chart pattern, um, what I'm looking for is for it to go in the you know direction of where it previously was. Uh, in other words, to to follow the trend. So I'm looking for an expansion in the direction of the trend. So that's what I'm looking for in chart patterns. Uh, candle patterns, uh, as I mentioned before. Um, 
Uh, well, I'll show you in a second anyway. So let's go on to uh, visual depiction. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, this is the process of naked uh, uh, support and resistance trading. I've got a lot of material here. I don't know if I'm going to get through all of this, so I'm just going to go through this real quick. Uh, I'm going to open. Um, this is what this is my process of uh, this type of trading. So what you do is uh, you open a long-term time frame. You know, usually what I I would do is I would open the daily time frame, and uh, I always have my daily uh, charts up where I can plot the major support and resistance lines, the horizontal support and resistance lines where price has turned in the past. Uh, as well as my trend lines and my uh, chart patterns. So, um, again, I would open a daily chart uh, time frame and plot all these major support and resistance lines. Then I would switch to my favorite short-term time frame, in this case, 30-minute. I was going to do a 5-minute or a 15-minute, but uh, it's easier to show you in this webinar format uh, a longer term. So I'm going to show you the 30-minute uh, time frame where, uh, you know, w once I switch to that, I'm going to draw... Uh, shorter term support and resistance, um, trend lines, patterns, etc. So you're going to see all of that. So uh, again, I start with the long term, uh, I, I plot all those, and then I switch to my short term, and then uh, and then I plot plot all the uh, the minor um, you know support and resistance, etc. So then uh, what I do on my um, on my uh, shorter term uh, shorter term time frame is I compress the chart. I'm sorry, I compress the chart uh, horizontally so that, uh, you know, I make it so as many historical bars are showing on one screen as possible. And the, uh, the reason I do this is to uh, confirm my long-term support and resistance, just to see that, uh, you know, the, the shorter term uh, confirms the longer term, okay? So, you know, what is a shorter term time frame? But it's, it's exactly, pretty much exactly like a longer term time frame, it's just, um, you know, all the major support and resistance lines should be there. So, you know, uh, once you compress your your short term, you should see that um, that it, it's pretty. You know, it, it it follows the long term. Okay. So then, once I do that, then I plot all the uh, horizontal lines where price pivoted in the past. Um, again, these are the minor ones on the short term. Uh, now, the more pivots, the stronger the line. And I'm not talking about pivot points here. I'm talking about uh, where price turned at a, uh, you know, at a previous support and resistance line. So the more pivots on a certain line, the stronger the line. And the most recent, again, is the strongest. Uh, those are two uh, rules that I, I tend to go by. Now, uh, you plot uh, the clearly visible trend lines as well, the dynamic support and resistance. And you plot uh, clear Fibonacci runs and uh, daily pivot points as well. Again, I'm not going to show you da daily pivot points, but uh, I, I will show you the Fibonacci. Basically, both of them are, you know, uh, mathematical, uh, mathematically derived support and resistance. Now, I would identify current potential chart patterns and candle patterns, if any, uh, in the, uh, you know, especially the uh, the flags and the pendants and the candles, and uh, I'm sorry, the uh, the triangles. And then I would monitor monitor for confluence or confirmation of two or more of these support and resistance factors. Uh, and then once I get into the, uh, you know, where I want to enter into a certain uh, a trade, then I'm going to look to enter multiple small trades with a filter. When I say filter, you have an entry filter. Many people have different types of filters. Uh, one filter is, uh, you're, for example, if you're looking for a break, uh, a breakout, then you're looking for price to break out, close. Uh, yeah, I'm going to show this in a chart uh, in a, in a, uh, very quickly, but um, and I'll uh, you know I'll explain all this on the chart. But uh, you enter into small trades with the um, uh, into multiple small trades with the filter. So again, if it breaks out, I'm looking for a close, and then uh, and then for the uh, for the next bar to to surpass the breakout uh, candle or or bar. Okay, so that's basically what I mean by that by filter. Uh, and then I would enter multiple small trades and then uh, close them at different target levels. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it would be to uh, have trailing stops, whether they're manual trailing stops or automated trailing stops. And then you could also have, again, like I said, with, uh, with the multiple small trades, you have staggered exits. You could uh, exit at different target levels so that you can lock in your trade or lock in your profits. Uh, same idea with the trailing stops, okay? And, of course, you do have an initial st uh, stop loss as well. So that's the process of, uh, of uh, support and resistance trading. Now, uh, very quickly, uh, for those of you who are not familiar, and I do have to do this for those of you who are uh, you know, beginners at this. Uh, these are what I mean by 
uh, horizontal support and resistance levels where price pivoted or turned in the past and you're looking for a breakout or for price to respect those lines. And then here on the right, you have the same type of thing. So that's what I mean by horizontal support and resistance lines. Uh, trend lines are simply, uh, again, uptrend support. Uptrend support. These are real charts, uh, although they are historical. Uptrend support, downtrend resistance on the right. Okay. Again, ideal would be uh, would be a parallel trend channel, uh, higher highs and higher uh, lows, and uh, lower highs and lower uh, lower lows. But uh, this will suffice for uh, for my trend lines. Uptrend support, downtrend resistance. Fibonacci retracements uh, very important. Um, in that uh, the, the only reason they're very important, in my opinion, is that uh, they're followed by a lot of people. So uh, they are uh, what we call a self-fulfilling prophecy. So if there are a lot of people are looking at the 38.2% uh, you know, Fibonacci level, then you know, you're know you looking for a bounce there, then, then that's going to happen because so many people are looking at it. Okay, so that's Fibonacci retracements. And then we've got chart patterns here. Uh, chart patterns, uh, as I mentioned, they're simply uh, volatility contraction, and you're looking for a breakout or a breakdown uh, to the upside to, or to the downside, uh, preferably in the direction of the trend. Um, but any breakout can be played. So you, you've got uh, triangles, which are often considered continuation patterns. You've got flags, which are uh, most often considered continuation patterns, as well as wedges uh, and rectangles, etc. Now, uh, on the bottom right here, I have some um, I have some uh, uh, reversal patterns, and uh, we're not really going to talk about those, although I'll show you a failed reversal pattern on the euro in a second uh, on the head and shoulders on the, on the euro. So um, basically, this is what I look for in chart patterns. Uh, again, simply dynamic support and resistance, uh, breakouts or respect. Well, in the, cur in the case of pa uh, patterns, because they're smaller, you're looking for breakouts, OK? So those are chart patterns. Candle patterns, uh, I've done many webinars uh, based upon candle patterns in conjunction with Western technical analysis, which simply means that you're looking for, um, you know, for example, uh, after a downtrend, you're looking for a hammer. But you're not just looking for a hammer. You're looking for a hammer that occurs at a support level. By the same token, shooting star over here on the right, uh, after an uptrend or after an up run, you're looking for a shooting star. You're looking for it, uh, not only the shooting star candle, you're looking for it to be confirmed by a resistance level. Those two, uh, you know, together, uh, and anything else you could, you could, you know, come up with would be a very good uh, high probability entry. Okay, so these are the candle patterns that I look for. Okay, so uh, right now uh, I'm gonna. Hopefully, I didn't go too fast with that. Hopefully, you, uh, you know, for those of you who are beginners at this, you understood that a little. If you have any questions, I'm gonna give you my email address at the end. You could always contact me now. Uh, I'm going to go quickly now over to my charts. OK. Now, hopefully, everyone can see my charts. Uh, as I mentioned before, this may not look like a, um, this may not look like a, um, uh, a naked chart. But you know, in, in, my, uh, in my way of defining a naked chart, uh, it is. So uh, basically, what we're looking at here is um, this looks very much like a daily chart. When you compress it like this, uh, it looks very much like uh, the daily chart does. But uh, this, in fact, is a 30-minute chart. So uh, this is what I'm looking at. On this is the euro dollar, by the way. So this is a euro dollar chart, 30-minute chart. Everything's really compressed as much as I could compress it. And uh, this is how I, uh, you know, draw my major support and resistance levels. Um, including my uh, trend lines, et cetera, et cetera. And I also have a bunch of other uh, you know, Fibonacci levels here that I didn't draw only because I've got too, mu too much stuff here. Okay? So uh, this is, um, and you're not really going to be drawing all this. Uh, you know, as, as time uh, goes by, you're going to be getting, you know, you're not going to have circles on your chart like I, I have here. The only reason I have circles on my chart is to, just to show you, you know, where uh, possibilities for this type of short-term trading are. So. Um, you know, in reality, when you're trading this, it's it's not going to be this cluttered. But anyway, so um, so so this is where you, you're at. Okay, so Harley, good question. Do I draw the trend lines on the daily and leave them on the 30 minute? Yes. As I mentioned before, and uh, on the PowerPoint slides, uh, what I do is I go to the daily chart first, 
and then I put in all my support and resistance levels and my trend lines, et cetera, to find the major levels. And then I drill down to the 30 minute uh, or the five minute or the 15 minute or what have you. And then I, uh, what I do is, um, uh, and then I make sure that it conforms. Okay, because sometimes you'll have, uh, uh, you know, times when, when it doesn't conform completely. But uh, for the most part, I look for where it conforms, and then I, from there, I expand my chart. Okay? So let me expand my chart. I got two charts to show you, but a bunch of stuff on each chart. So let me just go through it real quick, and this is going to be simple stuff uh, for those of you. And of course, this is, uh, you know, this, this will be simple stuff for uh, most of you, but uh, I'm going to show you what I mean by, uh, you know, this, sometimes, sometimes uh, sim simple is best. So let's go ahead here. Uh, let's just start from left to right. Okay, so I got my circles here that I drew up, um, you know, just to illustrate this. Now, I've got uh, a short-term uptrend here. And uh, again, as I, as I talked about before, uh, an uptrend line, uh, you're, looking for, uh, you're looking for support touches. And uh, the more, the better. And this is a short-term uptrend line right here. And you've got uh, positions here where you get into, um, where, where you get into a, a long trade. Now, if you take a look here, uh, I don't know. Uh, Dorix, what I mean by recent and strongest, what I mean by that is that uh, the, more, the more recent pivots are stronger. For example, I have, I have places here where, uh, you know, okay, back here. If you see, there's a pivot back here. Now, this is all the way in uh, October of 2008. Now, this pivot right here is not going to be as valid. This level right here is, uh, will be valid in many cases. Like, for example, you see a turn right here where my mouse is right here, um, that occurred right after that, or not right after that, but uh, a few, mo uh, several months after that. But then what I'm saying is that, uh, you know, pivots uh, way back in the day are not going to be as valid as pivots that occur uh, in more recent times. So let's say uh, a pivot occurred, um, a pivot occurred, see, right here, it's going to be more, uh, it's going to be more valid uh, you know, for, for your current trading, okay? So on the daily chart, I'm looking for the major uh, pivots, so the major turns at uh, support or resistance, but then I drill down to get the more recent ones. And yes, we are currently looking at a 30-minute chart, although, you know, I compress it a lot, so it looks like a daily, but uh, a 30-minute chart, and then I'm just making it bigger here, as you can see. Okay. So as you can see here, um, what do I mean by confluence? Okay, so I have a, a you know, a, and as you can notice, uh, as you notice here, I have no, uh, I have no indicators here. I don't even have a moving average here. You know, usually I just uh, I use a moving average for uh, reference purposes, but I don't even have a moving average. Uh, I don't have my usual stochastics on the bottom, just to you know drill into you the, the fact that you know you can trade uh, based upon uh, price action alone. Okay, w without uh, indicators, etc. So anyway, um, you have a, a resistance line here, okay, where it touched several times. Yeah, there was a breakout. That's fine. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, this is a support and resistance area right here, if you can see my line right here, okay? And then right here, it touches that line again, okay? Not only does it touch that line right here, this, this circle that I'm, you know, I hope you can see my mouse here, uh, that circle right there, it's also a downtrend line as you can see here, okay, a downtrend line. So you've got horizontal support and resistance, recent horizontal support and resistance. You've got a downtrend line in the form of this downtrend, uh, parallel downtrend channel. Um, and so that's a confluence of support. And, uh, you know, if there's no uh, significant breakout, uh, then, uh, you know, that, that would be a, um, a higher probability a short trade, okay. And uh, same thing here. So if you take a look down here, uh, you see that, uh, you know, there's a bounce here, and then uh, it goes up, and then there's another bounce here, and it goes up from there, okay? So uh, that's another area where you could uh, play this uh, uptrend line, okay? There should have been actually a lot more circles here, but I'm going to go through just the circles. Okay, now, um, if you take a look here, let me see. Okay, so the next circle here. Uh, you take a look here that I draw, I've drawn my, uh, this is my Fibonacci retracement. So I've drawn it from down here, which is the, uh, you know, the major low down here, up to the high up here, okay? Uh, after that, uh, let me see. 
after that occurred, uh, there was a, a retracement to. Uh, okay, wait. Let me let me just see. This is a little hard to see here. Okay, so uh, you have this uh, you have this uh, Fibonacci retracement level up here. Okay, and then it retraces down to the 50 uh, 50 percent line down here. What you have here is uh, also an uptrend line. Okay. Beyond that, you also have, and I'm talking about this circle right here. Okay. This circle right here, you have, uh, you know, this is a really precise uh, touch of this uptrend line. Okay. Not only that, it's a 50% uh, retracement of this run from down here all the way to this, uh, this uh, swing low down here to the swing high up here. Okay. Not only that, it's also a prior support and resistance level. See, as you can see right here. Okay, so that's another uh, that's another confluence of three different factors there uh, that you could take in your um, in your trading. Now, what happens here at this line? Okay, on a short term basis, uh, there's some consolidation. Uh, so that's why you know you have a good confluence of three different factors there, support factors, uh, and you have uh, a possible entry, but there's uh, there's consolidation. So uh, what you could do is you could go long in this case. And put a, um, you know, uh, put a your risk management right under uh, the support, the confluence of support. A lot of yes, a lot of confluence right there. Okay, so um, let me see here. Okay, so now uh, at the same level here, back here, and I skipped all this uh, because you know I was a little confused just now uh, because of all these lines here. But uh, you have this uh, level right here. Okay, now you have a um, a pattern right here. That occurs at this level. Okay, so what happens at this uh, prior support and resistance level for this circle right here? Uh, the question is, how many pairs are you able to watch? I watch all the pairs. I have, uh, you know, I have all my support and resistance and my uptrends and downtrends, etc., all on, um, you know, all on my charts, so that, uh, uh, you know, and I don't change it. I save it so that whenever uh, there's new price action occurring, I could see, you know. All of my stuff there. So if you have everything already drawn on there, uh, then you you know periodically you add more support and resistance levels, then you could watch a lot of currency pairs. Okay, so uh, here you have a uh, you know you have a uh, a pattern here, a consolidation pattern uh, in a flag or a, a pennant type of uh, pattern, and also a breakout of resistance. And if you could see here, okay. If you could see here, it's, I know it's a little hard to see because I've compressed it so much. Um, for this particular area right here, uh, you have a breakout of this prior horizontal support and resistance line, and you got a pullback right here. Okay, and this is also a congestion area, um, a period of uh, lower uh, contracted volatility, and then uh, what happens? Uh, what happened next was a very nice. Um, you know, breakout to the upside. So you could have either uh, played the breakout of this. Uh, of this support uh, support resistance line, or you could have, uh, if you missed that, then you could have pre uh, played the pullback here, um, or the uh, the breakout of the low volatility, or the break you know the breakout of the flag, right here, and that would have been uh, you know very good as well. Okay, and again, I apologize for all this. Uh, you know, it's hard to show you all this uh, when it's all compressed like this. But okay, so here as well. Um, you got the same thing here with this uh, with this long uh, pennant pattern here, okay? A breakout of prior support resistance, uh, which uh, which is uh, you know it pulls back to the line, and then in the in the process it forms a pennant pattern and then it breaks out. Okay, so that's a uh, uh, you play a breakout there um, again a confluence of different factors. You've got a support and resistance factor as well as a as well as a, a you know a, a chart pattern. Okay. Um, what occurs here? Right up here, what occurs is, uh, you know, on this circle right here. The question, uh, MMC, uh, how do you determine exits? Now, I determine exits, as I mentioned before, uh, primarily by entering multiple trades and then, uh, and then looking for targets. The, the way I look for targets is uh, very much the same way that I look for uh, entries. Uh, I'm looking for you know, uh, respect or a breakout or violation of support or resistance, 
and then I'm looking for a target, if you, uh, you know, a target in the next support or resistance. And if you see any of my uh, analysis and my chart of the day, I'm always looking for targets if there's a breakout or if there's respect of a certain uh, support and resistance level. Okay, that's how I look for targets. And I use uh, multiple uh, lots or a trailing stop methodology. Okay, so if you take a look up here, uh, you could see that uh, there was a triple test of this uh, prior horizontal support resistance line. At the same time, uh, let me see. Down here, you have uh, down here you have a retest of this support and resistance line. Okay, uh, let me see. Uh, and also, by the way, this is the 23.6% Fibonacci level. So that's another confluence fact, uh, factor there. Um, okay, and then I showed you this one right here. Uh, this is uh, simply the uh, uptrend support line, the 50% retracement, uh, as, well as, um, as well as prior support resistance. Okay, confluence factor right there. Uh, and then here, this circle right here is showing you a continuing uptrend. Okay, any of which could be played on a short-term basis uh, as, as with a short-term entry. And this is pretty pre precise. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, support and resistance is not often uh, very precise. But uh, in this case, uh, it was. Okay, so what else do you have here? And there are several different places that I didn't circle. But uh, here you have a, break, uh, a breakdown of this uh, uptrend line that I showed you before, this very valid uptrend line with several different uh, touches is a breakdown and then a congestion zone in an inverted um, inverted uh, pennant pattern right here. Okay, if you take a look at that, that's an inverted pennant pattern. And uh, after breakouts, uh, what I like to look for are uh, consolidation. If it does consolidate, of course, you're always looking for a runaway move, but um, if there's a consolidation, you're looking for uh, you're looking for any type of pattern to occur after a breakout and a possible uh, you know uh, continuation in the direction of the breakout. Okay, so that that's that real quick. Um, what happens over here? Uh, this is a prior support and resistance level right here. It's also a downtrend line. Okay, a downtrend, uh, a new, a, a relatively new downtrend uh, resistance line. Okay, uh, and it coincides with uh, a prior support and resistance level. Okay, this is uh, pretty uh, far off, but uh, this is a prior support and resistance level as well as a downtrend line. Okay, uh, it breaks out uh, above the downtrend line, and uh, there's a pullback to the line and then um, a move up from there. OK, now before what I was uh, talking about, uh, I was going to show you uh, what happened with the failed uh, head and shoulders break. Uh, as you can see here, well, first of all, let me show you this real quick. OK, again, I'm going to compress this all the way. So you see this high at 1.6. Now, uh, and you see it continue on with a hit here and then up here on that, uh, you know, that low liquidity move uh, towards the end of last year. Um, you know, it was a pretty good trend line nonetheless, OK? So now what happened there, we have a breakout, a breakout above that long-term line right here, OK? And then um, uh, this is also a breakout uh, above this prior, above this prior uh, resistance line or this pivot right here. Okay, so you got a breakout there, and then you have a um, you have a, a head and shoulders here, which I'll make bigger so you could take a look. Okay, so uh, this uh, this created a head and shoulders pattern that uh, broke down but did not have follow through. So uh, I would call that a failed head and shoulders pattern. Um, it looks like we're actually running out of time, but uh, you know it's basically the same uh, the same type of thing here. You can trade uh, off of uh, you know charts without indicators based primarily or almost exclusively on on uh, support and resistance. And yeah, boy, yeah, I'm going to show you that real quick. Okay. 
that's the candle slides uh, again. And unfortunately, because of the compression of the charts, it's hard to show you, you know, uh, a lot of those areas where there was confluence of support and resistance and the, uh, you know, downtrends and uptrends, as well as the chart patterns, there were also uh, these candle patterns. Unfortunately, it was hard to show you that because of uh, how, how much I had my uh, charts compressed, uh, just to show you, you know, all the different opportunities. Now, the main thing of this, again, is to uh, look for, uh, you know, look for different confluences of, uh, uh, of support and resistance and different uh, support and resistance factors. Uh, follow the trend, uh, play your breakouts and your volatility expansions, and all coming together, those uh, can create very high probability trades. Now, I think we, we have run out of time, unfortunately. Uh, you know, if any of you will be at, uh, in Barcelona for the uh, October International Traders Conference, uh, I'll have a lot more time to go through all of this with you in, in much greater detail, uh, and we're going to be able to do some. Um, we're going to be able to do some, uh, you know, uh, real-time trading. And uh, any questions that you have about this webinar or about anything regarding what I've brought up, uh, please email me at jchen at fxsoul.com. Uh, you can check out my chart of the day at FX Solutions and at, on FX Street, um, and look for my book Essentials of Foreign Exchange Trading, as well as uh, you can follow me on Twitter at James Chen FX, and uh, again, please do contact me with any questions. Thank you very much for your time.